Hello, and welcome to The Signal, Workplace NL's health and safety podcast. Workplace NL is the Workers' Compensation Board in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. The focus is to promote safe and healthy workplaces, provide return to work programs, and offer compensation to injured workers and their dependents. This series of podcasts will provide you with the latest information on how workplaces can protect the health and safety of workers. Please enjoy the show. Hello, I'm your host, Colin Fuhr, and today we're going to talk about preventing musculoskeletal injuries, or MSIs. Almost 70% of lost time claims at Workplace NL relate to soft tissue injury. Designing and planning work with simple and practical methods to reduce the risk of MSIs is the best way to prevent them. To talk about MSI prevention strategies, today I'm joined by Cheryl Lee Osborne, MSI Advisor with Workplace NL. Welcome to The Signal, Cheryl. Hi, thanks, Colin. I'm more than happy to be here today to talk about MSI prevention. You're right, 69% of lost time claims at Workplace NL relate to soft tissue injury. As the number one type of lost time injury in our province, MSIs are costly for employers, and they cost $103 million in annual claims costs. To prevent MSIs, employers must implement an effective health and safety program to minimize the risk of injury and workers must follow safe work practices to protect themselves and their coworkers. But before we dive right into the prevention strategies, it's important first to communicate the definition of MSI. A musculoskeletal injury, or MSI for short, is an injury or disorder of the muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, nerves, blood vessels, or related soft tissue, and they include a sprain, strain, and inflammation which may be caused or aggravated by work. So Cheryl, what do Workplace NL statistics tell us about who is at risk of developing an MSI? Well, generally people associate MSIs with people who work in an office environment. And while those workers are at risk, general office clerks don't even make up the list for the top 10 occupations affected by MSI over the last few years. And let's face it, many office workers are experiencing pain and discomfort, if not before the COVID-19 pandemic, most certainly during and since the height of the pandemic, where we experienced a global shift in the way office workers perform their work. For many, the workplace became the workers' home, and their workstations were not exactly a good fit from an ergonomics point of view. Some of the more common occupations where there is a high prevalence of MSI include healthcare workers, such as PCAs, RNs and LPNs, light duty cleaners and janitors, construction trades helpers and laborers, retail salespersons and clerks, material handlers, food counter attendants, truck drivers, and carpenters. And this means that there is a high risk for workers in the healthcare and social services industry, as well as service, wholesale and retail trade, construction, transportation and storage, and also the manufacturing industry. Even though MSIs are common in these occupations and industries, these injuries are not only limited to these careers. There are very common MSI risk factors in every industry and occupation. Great answer. Now, we only have a short time on the podcast today, and I'm sure you could speak at length to MSI risk factors, but can you give us the Coles notes on what some of the common risk factors are? Knowing these risk factors could certainly aid an employer in implementing MSI prevention strategies. Yes, I'll keep it brief, Colin. If you're consistently using a workstation that isn't designed to fit you, or you are constantly finding yourself in awkward postures, you may be well on your way to developing a painful MSI. The same goes if your job consistently requires you to repeat the same motions with your body, hold your body in a fixed position for prolonged periods, or if you're constantly exerting high amounts of effort to complete physically demanding work. Namely, these top four reasons, known as risk factors, statistically cause the vast majority of MSIs in our province. In short, they are sustained postures, awkward postures, forceful exertions, and repetitive motions. Essentially, what I like to say is that when we move well, by moving often with good body mechanics, then we feel well and we work well. Other MSI risk factors that are not as common, but we do see injuries from, include vibration, local contact stresses, insufficient lighting, and adverse temperatures. One of these risk factors may exist by itself, but we do usually see two or more occur together, such as, for example, forceful exertions and awkward postures. And when two factors exist together, the potential for an MSI increases. Now, given the nature of MSIs, I know that the signs and symptoms can be different for every disorder or condition, but 
If an employer is wanting to educate their workers on early detection, what signs and symptoms should they be paying attention to? Signs and symptoms can present in any combination, and they can range from minor discomfort to severe pain. Some common signs and symptoms to look out for include pain, ache, tenderness, soreness, tightness, stiffness, numbness, redness or swelling, shooting, burning sensations, muscle weakness, loss of strength, decreased movement, or even loss of function of a body part. Like an alarm system, these signs and symptoms are our body's way of telling us that something's wrong. Signs and symptoms may present immediately as a result of an acute injury, but more often they appear gradually over time, starting off as minor and then progressively worsening. It's important that workers are educated about the signs and symptoms so that they can recognize early when an MSI may be developing and it's not only important, but it's an ele- a legislative responsibility of employers to educate their workers on this, Colin. Cheryl, you mentioned the legislative responsibility for employers to educate workers on MSI signs and symptoms. What else is required of an employer from an MSI prevention perspective? The need for a process for MSI prevention actually begins with occupational health and safety legislation. There are specific requirements found in the Newfoundland and Labrador Occupational Health and Safety Regulations, with sections 50 to 54 speaking directly to the programming requirements for MSI prevention. Employers must recognize workplace factors that may expose workers to MSI, evaluate the risk associated with job tasks, and determine the most effective controls for workers. And when performing risk assessments, employers must consult with workers who are showing signs and symptoms of MSI, the Occupational Health and Safety Committee, Worker Health and Safety Representative, or Workplace Health and Safety Designate. Education and training in risk identification and specific control measures that includes work procedures, mechanical aids, and personal protective equipment, or PPE, must be conducted with workers. The last two sections of the regulations pertaining specifically to MSI prevention, sections 55 and 56, address seating and standing work, as well as lifting and handling specifically. So looking at the legislative requirements for MSI prevention, essentially what the legislation is saying is that there must be a process in place in workplaces to deal with MSI risks. Having an effective ergonomics process established in the workplace is an employer's best means of preventing MSIs. MSIs sound like they can be complex. Certainly with anything that's complex, there's often an element of apprehension in how to deal with it in the workplace, and maybe even an element of avoidance if there's uncertainty over where to begin. So from a prevention perspective, where is the best place for an employer to start? The starting point for MSI prevention lies with the hazard recognition, evaluation, and control process. In order to eliminate MSI hazards and minimize risk, there must be a process for recognizing them, evaluating the risk they pose, selecting the best method to control them, and monitoring and evaluating the control for effectiveness. Employers should aim to identify whether any of the MSI risk factors are present in their workplaces, what risk they pose, and what controls are required to minimize that risk. Of course, the consultation during this process is important, as is the the awareness, education, and training component following the implementation of controls. Cheryl, you previously mentioned that having an effective ergonomics process established in the workplace is an employer's best means of preventing MSIs. When people talk about MSIs, there's usually a reference to ergonomics. Can you speak to how they're connected? Absolutely. Ergonomics, generally speaking, is the practice of designing work to fit the individual needs and abilities of the people doing it, rather than the other way around. MSIs develop as a result of a mismatch between work demands and a person's capability. Any task we perform or posture that we hold long enough can cause an MSI. Simple tasks like folding linen, lifting product, helping a patient into a chair, or even standing at a processing line are all tasks that can cause MSI but only if we let them. Ergonomics considers the human characteristics to optimize the match between workers, their tasks, and the work environment. The key principle is fitting the task to the human. Ergonomics can also be understood in terms of making it easier for the worker to do the task physically, cognitively, and organizationally. Practicing ergonomics is like saying, I'm a human and everything around me must suit me so that I'm safe and more productive. 
For example, work surfaces are at the proper working height so workers can work in neutral posture. The items they handle or use in their workstation are within easy reach so they can work with their elbows close to their body sides rather than having to overreach. Mechanical handling devices are provided to reduce manual handling of loads. The flow of work is designed to avoid unnecessary steps in a work process. The tools that they use are designed to fit their hand, are lighter, and require minimal use force to use. They have a variety of work tasks that they can rotate between to break up prolonged postures and reduce repetitive motion. And they are encouraged to take breaks and micro breaks to enhance blood flow, recover muscles, and reset their body mechanics. These are just a few examples of good ergonomic design of workplaces and jobs. Good ergonomics aims to properly design a workspace or task from start to finish, resulting in comfortable, productive, and healthy workers. MSI prevention requires the implementation of ergonomics practices to address the MSI risk factors. Therefore, employers must establish a process for the implementation of ergonomics in the workplace. All workplace parties then need to be educated about the process and then in their specific roles and responsibilities to make that process effective. So what does practicing good ergonomics look like in the workplace? Practicing good ergonomics generally falls into three categories, the first being workplace design. MSI prevention cannot effectively take place unless there is a conscious effort made to properly design the work for the worker from start to finish. Good design takes into account the general layout and condition of the workplace and specific work areas. It takes also into account the various shapes, sizes, and heights of people and what each one needs to do their jobs safely and efficiently. It looks at safe working heights and reaches of the people doing the job, for example. Work organization is the manner in which your work is carried out. Change up your job tasks so different muscles get used. Set a reasonable pace for work and take regular breaks. Some jobs have periods of peak work demands, and this is common in seasonal work, for example, in the fishing industry, where there's tight deadlines to, for quotas to be caught and processed. Circumstances such as this may force workers to work faster or skip their breaks, increasing the rate of fatigue and consequently their risk for MSI. This is where we can implement controls such as job rotation and micro breaks so that production can stay high while still avoiding injury. This way repetitive motions can be reduced and muscles given the opportunity to recover. And support in the workplace is important as well to keep workers happy, healthy, and safe. Lack of support in the workplace may increase a worker's risk of developing an MSI. Make sure there is enough staff to do the work required. Repair defective equipment or purchase more so workers have proper equipment to use. Provide adequate training and supervision. And make sure workers are supported by their supervisors and coworkers. These are just a few examples, Colin, of how we can prevent MSIs in the workplace. Just as we would do with any other hazard in the workplace, MSI hazards must be controlled using the hierarchy of controls. So engineer out the hazard first, for example, by changing the design of the workstation. And if hazards are not fully eliminated, then add administrative controls that alter the way the work is done, for example, by providing regular micro breaks. And as a last resort, use personal protective equipment to further reduce the risk. For example, supportive footwear with shock absorbing soles or insoles to reduce shock on the spinal discs from working long periods on hard flooring, like cement or metal grate, for example. Great advice, Cheryl. Now, in recent years, we have seen great emphasis placed on health and wellness. How does one's personal wellness play a role in MSI prevention? Hmm, great question, Colin. It is proven that healthy lifestyle behaviors improve our personal wellness, which in turn reduces our risk for MSI. Exercise improves our physical conditioning and helps strengthen muscles. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines recommend that adults get 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week in a minimum of 10-minute bouts. A healthy diet nourishes our body tissues. A combination of exercise and a healthy diet helps maintain a healthy body weight, and this minimizes pressure on our joints, like our knees, for example. Drinking water helps reduce mental and physical fatigue and lubricates our joints. Adequate rest minimizes fatigue. When we're tired or fatigued, we tend to take shortcuts and be less mindful of our posture and body mechanics when we work. Using good posture outside of work as well, this also minimizes stress and strain on our bodies. 
So to reduce the risk of workplace MSIs and help workplace parties fulfill their legislated OHS responsibilities, Workplace NL developed a voluntary MSI certification training standard. Is this training something that you would suggest for workplace parties working to reduce MSIs? Most definitely. Although the certification training standard is voluntary, there is legislative requirements for employers to provide education and training to workers who are at risk of an MSI. And this training would assist workplace parties in meeting their legislative responsibilities and reducing workplace injuries. The reality is that workers are often not provided sufficient MSI training and hired not knowing about the MSI risks related to their work or about the control measures that can eliminate or reduce exposure to those risks. The reason for many ergonomics or MSI prevention control measures may not be obvious or clearly understood by workers and employers, and this often leads to controls not being implemented or complied with. For example, the reasons for a guard on a saw are quite obvious. However, reasons for implementing regular micro breaks to prevent MSI are not so clearly understood. Many employers and workers do not understand the stress that is placed on the body when we hold body positions for prolonged periods or use repetitive motions to perform our work. And because all work has a physical component to it, from lifting a box to sitting behind a desk, risk factors are likely to be identified in the majority of jobs. Therefore, most all workers need to be educated. Participating in MSI prevention training ensures workers receive the education and training they need to be able to recognize risks for MSI in their work and make informed decisions about what actions to take to eliminate hazards or minimize risk. Anyone interested in attending training can search the certification training registry to find course offerings from approved providers. So Cheryl, I know that you are aware that uh, here at Workplace NL, we promote Move Well, Work Well Week every year. Can you tell us more about this initiative? Because of the prevalence of MSI in our province, the province of Newfoundland and Labrador sets aside a week each September to raise awareness about the impact of these injuries in the workplace and find practical solutions for prevention. The week, as you noted, called Move Well, Work Well Week, reminds us that when we move, rather than being sedentary, or working in fixed postures for too long, and when we move well through a range of healthy postures with reduced force placed on tissues, it's re it results in us being well and working well. We are more productive, comfortable, healthy, and we have a lower risk for developing an MSI. I want to encourage all of you listening to this podcast today that just to listen to your body and get up and move at any point if you start to feel stiff or tight or achy from sitting for too long. Just get up and move at any point. It will do your body good. Workplace NL marks Move Well, Work Well Week, as you mentioned, Colin, by organizing MSI awareness and prevention activities for its employees, and many other organizations in our province do the same. We encourage your organization to start as well if you haven't been participating all along. Of course, if the week that's designated in September does not work for your workplace, feel free to celebrate and promote this week whenever is convenient for your organization. If you are listening to today's podcast, this may be one of the ways that your organization has chosen to mark this important initiative. Excellent initiative, Cheryl. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me today on The Signal. Definitely a lot of great information, and Workplace NL certainly does have a lot of resources available to assist in MSI education and awareness. You can access those resources online at workplacenl.ca. You're welcome, Colin. It was my pleasure. I think the key takeaway message from today's podcast is that MSIs can be prevented by incorporating ergonomics principles into the design of workplaces and jobs, having adequate supports in the workplace, and practicing good ergonomics at home and at work. Thank you for joining us today. Transcripts are available to use in your workplace to increase workers' knowledge in various occupational health and safety topics. Visit WorkplaceNL.ca for more information on the services we provide to workplaces. Feel free to share the signal on social media to improve workplace health and safety everywhere. Thank you, and have a safe and healthy day.